Bundeswehr soldiers during training. The attack must be executed quickly, aggressively, and surgically. Since the Bundeswehr's formation, its weapons have improved enormously. The soldiers nowadays have access to state-of-the-art firearms. The old adage, the one who shoots faster and hits more wins, still applies today. Enemy units at 250 meters. Firepower is always a combination of mindset, tactics, and technology, and the only way a soldier can prevail in combat. The sniper plays a key role in today's conflicts. Here. Target 750 meters. The automatic grenade launcher is a different caliber of weapon altogether. It's all about firepower. Two units burst mode fire for effect. The Panzerfaust rocket-propelled grenade is even more devastating. Firing RPG! And for distant armored targets, the MELS comes into play. Handheld weapons make a substantial contribution to the firepower of the German armed forces. A glimpse inside the armory of the Bundeswehr reveals the weapons technology and their tactical deployment. Hartheim am Rhein, Germany. Here, the 292nd Ranger Battalion prepares for international missions. We'll exit the building in compact Y formation. And go. Slowly, slowly. Smoke deployed. Approach the barricade. Important here, one and two have to achieve separation on the flanks so that three can come through the middle. The third then heads straight for the barricade and places the door across it. They're training for urban warfare. The soldiers storm one house after the other. We'll take right, you left, sustained fire, semi-automatic. Reds follows in front. In, in, in! And always with them in combat, the G36 assault rifle, the standard issue weapon of the Bundeswehr. The robust and easy to operate weapon is used by other special ops and police forces around the world as well. The G36 has a combat range of 200 to 400 meters and shoots 5.56 by 45 caliber rounds. Because of this, it has very little recoil. A big advantage of this weapon is its ergonomics. It can be operated equally well by right- and left-handed shooters. Change of location. In the mountains of Lower Saxony, paratroopers from Seedorf are training. Besides their airborne assault capability, they're especially proficient at fighting in wooded terrain and built-up areas. The paratrooper's primary weapon is likewise the G36 assault rifle. The G36 assault rifle is approximately one meter in length and weighs 3.6 kilograms. It has a maximum effective range of 500 meters and is theoretically capable of firing 750 rounds a minute in automatic mode. The G36 consists mainly of impact-resistant plastic. Newer versions have mounting rails on the receiver housing. These allow sights, laser light modules, and night vision devices such as the NSA-80 to be quickly and easily attached. The weapon is night combat capable from version A2 on, together with a night vision device. And all versions are night combat capable with an extra attachment. The magazine can hold 30 rounds and is transparent. That way, the shooter can always see how many cartridges are left. The G36 is characterized by its simple design. A soldier can field strip it in just a few steps. We're going to field strip the G36 now. First, we remove the sling. There are two push pins here. We can push these through and pull them out from the other side. They can be stored in the holes in the stock. This allows us to remove the trigger group with pistol grip. Now we can fold away the stock and remove the butt stock with the recoil spring and bolt carrier. 
Last but not least, we remove the handguard. And can done. And can then remove the operating rod with the gas piston. The G36 is now stripped. The Bundeswehr's experience on international missions has shown that the standard issue G36 assault rifle has limitations in terms of range and penetrating power. Which is why the Bundeswehr procured the G27 battle rifle. It closes the gap between the G36 and large caliber systems. The G27 is a semi or fully automatic rifle with telescopic sight for use by infantry. A so-called light support weapon. The weapon is primarily used by the special forces of the army as well as the Navy and Air Force. And by the Joint Support Service too. The nearly five kilogram G27 allows precision shots to be made at greater distances of up to 600 meters. It has a theoretical rate of fire of 600 rounds a minute. The G27 is a robust and modular military weapon. The cold hammer forged chrome lined barrels are available in different lengths. It's even possible to fit a silencer. The weapon can be individually configured by the shooter. Telescopic sight, reflex sight, laser light module, laser pointer and grenade launcher can be attached to the numerous accessory rails. The magazine can hold either 10 or 20 rounds of 7.62 mm by 51 caliber ammunition. The weapon can be fired in automatic mode with a fire rate of 600 rounds a minute. It's mostly used in semi-automatic mode, so as fast as I can pull the trigger. Other accessories include a bipod, foregrip and NSV 600 night vision attachment. Compared to the standard issue G36 rifle, the G27 has a much higher muzzle power and range, thus making it much more effective against single targets. The kit comes with three magazines. I generally increase that to four or five, as many as I can carry. In Hartheim, the 292nd Ranger Battalion is about to storm another building. This time, the assault teams have the support of a relatively new weapon. We've deployed a support element that is in cover in the woods. They're equipped with three machine guns to cover the target building with suppressive fire. This enables the assault elements to do their job. So the enemy in the building is kept down and their ability to respond reduced allowing our two assault teams to maneuver and breach the building. While one of the assault teams waits under cover, the other takes care of the barbed wire barricade in front of the building. Everyone, this is Alpha, counting down for covering fire. Hammer in three, two, one. Hammer. Hammer. We generally differentiate between hammer and sickle. Hammer means suppressive fire covering the entire building and breaching site. And as soon as the assault teams are operating close to the building, we call sickle. The covering fire is then shifted deeper. The assault teams deploy smoke grenades. Invisible to the enemy, they then storm the building. Good coordination between fire and movement is crucial here. Hammer ceased, let's go. The soldiers shoot blank ammunition. This way, shots are simulated as realistically as possible. Entry point open, we're going straight in. Alpha 3, everyone inside, ground floor secured. Request, take next floor. Need the next team, over. The infantrymen usually fight in squads or fire teams of four to 12 soldiers. Although they all have the same basic training, they are also specialized in different ways, weapon systems and entry methods, radio communications and combat medic. Once the first floor has been cleared, a machine gun team moves in and takes up position in the house in order to engage hostile troops. 
The weapon being used here is an MG5 general purpose medium machine gun. The fully automatic weapon can fire short and long bursts. The MG5 is used either dismounted with a bipod or mounted on a tripod as a light support weapon. The MG5 weighs around 12 kilograms. It shoots 7.62 millimeter by 51 NATO caliber rounds. The weapon has a range of up to 1,000 meters and can fire up to 800 rounds a minute. The MG5 has a gas-operated reloading system and the firing rate is adjustable. Via the gas offtake, I can set it to shoot at 640, 720 or 800 rounds per minute. The MG5 is a fully automatic belt-loaded weapon. It has a telescopic sight with four times magnification and a red dot can be switched on. There's a fold-up mechanical sight on the receiver and barrel as a backup should the optical sight be out of action. G5 is used on all of the Bundeswehr's combat missions. For this reason, its operation and tactical deployment are drilled repeatedly. So regarding the enemy situation, enemy in platoon or at least reinforced squad strength in the area armed with handheld weapons, RPGs and vehicles, it means tactical pickups armed with 50 caliber machine guns. Left neighbor Charlie 2, right neighbor Charlie 3. My plan, Charlie 1 takes up wide defensive positions as designated with pickets to detect enemy tactical reconnaissance early and repel enemy attacks. Eliminate the enemy. MG, you take up position on the far left. Your job, destroy the enemy from half squad size and unarmored vehicles. But hold your fire. Wait until I give the order. The squad leader intends for the MG5 crew to provide fire support for the infantry fighting in front. The two soldiers that make up the MG crew get ready. The men move quickly between cover until they've almost reached their assigned position. Get ready. Roger, MG ready for action. Go! Go, go, go! Now go! The MG crew consists of two soldiers who work closely together. The machine gunner engages the enemy. The other observes where the rounds land and assists with the operation of the machine gun, which weighs nearly 12 kilograms. Both coordinate closely with the other soldiers in the infantry unit. The two soldiers switch positions several times, following their advancing comrades from the flank. Enemy unit 250 meters dead ahead. Thanks to its low recoil, it's possible to accurately fire longer bursts on target. We're using 7.62 by 51 millimeter rounds. It comes in ball, armor piercing and tracer versions. The tracer ammunition is essential for night combat capability. The ammunition of the MG5 is fed by a cartridge belt. The 120 round belt boxes or belt drums are attached to the left side of the weapon. It can theoretically fire 800 rounds a minute. The Bundeswehr paratroopers carry the nearly 80 kilogram GMG automatic grenade launcher to a prepared position they will soon be using it to support their teammates in their fight against the enemy. The crew of the large caliber weapon consists of a squad leader, gunner, and loader. 
The GMG is an automatic light support weapon for the infantry and the combat security forces of the Army, Air Force, and Navy, and fills the gap between RPG and mortar. We're a company-level fire support weapons unit. Our job is to neutralize targets, single or area targets, mobile or stationary at a distance of 100 to 1500 meters. The GMG is one of the Bundeswehr's most modern weapons systems. The housing is injection molded. The weapon itself is mounted on a tripod. The over one meter long weapon weighs 29 kilograms and 61 kilograms with tripod and mount. It fires 40 millimeter by 53 caliber ammunition and has a maximum effective range of 1,500 meters. It can theoretically fire 350 rounds a minute. The optical sight has range markings going to 1,500 meters. There are also lead markings for engaging horizontally moving targets. At today's shooting range, the soldiers are using training rounds identifiable by their blue plastic head. In combat, high explosive or fragmentation rounds are used. There are also flashbang, tear gas, and smoke cartridges available. The paratroopers get themselves ready. Their comrades are engaged in the firefight with their assault rifles and MGs. They've requested the support of the grenade launcher crew by radio. Delta Golf receiving over. Okay, guys, we're on. Here we go. The three men of the GPG crew leave cover and move forward. Having arrived in position, the squad leader instructs each man on their specific job. Marcel, here. Put that over there. You set up the base. Leuchtenberger, stay here for now. Yes, sir. They continue undercover to the designated position at the edge of the woods. From there, the soldiers can survey the battlefield and deploy their weapon without being spotted by the enemy. Once my base is set up, mount it. Only now is the GMG mounted on the tripod. Everything undercover and as quietly as possible. The belted ammunition is fed from the left from an ammunition box with 32 rounds or an ammo backpack with 64 rounds. The loader feeds the first cartridge on the belt into the feed chute. The weapon is partially loaded. To finish loading, it has to be cocked. The weapon is now ready to fire. Half left, half left, range 150. Finger with the right of the left ridge. Got it. Fire. Fire cluster. 150, enemy APC making observation stop. Ranging shot, fire. Two clusters, automatic fire. Fire for effect. Enemy eliminated, okay. Firepower, especially infantry firepower, is always a combination of technology, tactics, training, and attitude. The combat mindset. You have to go into combat with the will to win the battle. You have to engage in a firefight with the attitude, I'm going to win this firefight. Fortunately, the Bundeswehr has been putting greater emphasis on this combat mindset in recent years. Zedorf in Lower Saxony. Besides the paratroopers, specialist forces of the 31st Airborne Regiment are training an assault here in a so-called urban warfare training ground. In addition to the G36 rifle, they will be using the Bundeswehr P8 pistol. Hands up! Hands up! Get up! Get up! Shoot it! The P8 pistol was developed under the designation USP, Universal Self-Loading Pistol, specifically for use by the police and military. The P-8 was issued to the armed forces from 1997 together with the G-36, but the role of the weapon itself has changed significantly. The pistol used to be a personal protection weapon for military leaders and large weapons systems operators. It's now used as the secondary firearm across the board. Each soldier has his assault rifle and a P-8 as a backup as well. The P-8 is made from plastic and steel, 
The specially dust-protected magazine holds 15 rounds. The pistol is just under 20 centimeters long and weighs 750 grams unloaded. This makes it comparatively light. It fires 9mm by 19 caliber cartridges in semi-automatic mode and has a maximum effective range of 50 meters. The weapon is equipped with a classic iron sight. To strip the P8, assuming I have a loaded weapon with magazine, I first need to do a safety check. First, I make sure the safety is on. Then I remove and check the magazine. It's empty. Next, I check the chamber. To do this, I always turn the weapon towards my target, form a cup with my left hand, retract the slide, lock it with the slide stop, and then I can see that there's nothing in my left hand. Inspect the chamber again, see that the weapon is also empty, now it's safe to work on. To strip. First thing is to remove the slide. Now I can strip the weapon. There I have the recoil spring and guide rod, the barrel and the slide. The P8 is stripped. The P8 is for aimed semi-automatic firing. It serves principally as a secondary weapon for personal defense. The Bundeswehr generally uses 9mm cartridges with a ball projectile. However, this ammunition cannot penetrate modern body armor. That's what the G36 is for. Basically, it's for shooting people, the enemy on foot at close quarters. But the real effective range for a good marksman is 20 to 25 meters max. Being a semi-automatic weapon, you can naturally shoot fairly quickly, but your accuracy would drop significantly if you did. The P8 can hardly achieve a man-stopping effect with 9mm ball ammunition and individually aimed shots. So the Bundeswehr's shooting concept was changed. The shooter should fire repeatedly until incapacitation is achieved. Firearms training should naturally start by teaching basic marksmanship skills. But they should always be taught in conjunction with tactical skills and start as soon as possible. This includes individual tactics, such as how do I load my weapon, how do I clear a jam, how do I move from cover to cover, how do I engage an opponent against different target backgrounds. But should also include team tactics, bounding fire, for example. Fire and movement, extremely important, and one of the keys to surviving on the modern battlefield. Modern special forces and specialized units in today's Bundeswehr have a wide range of different weapon systems at their disposal. Being an extremely compact weapon, the MP7 submachine gun is ideally suited for operations in confined environments, like house-to-house -house combat. It bridges the gap between assault rifle and pistol. Because of its compact design, it's primarily issued to the crews of armored and unarmored vehicles. The Feldjäger, the Bundeswehr military police, also use the MP7. The MP7 weighs barely two kilograms. Due to its small caliber, it has a maximum effective range of 150 meters. It has a cyclical rate of fire of 950 rounds per minute. The MP7, the MP7 is a close range weapon. That means it's used to engage enemy troops at close quarters due to its effective range of 150 meters. Before stripping the weapon, I do a safety check. So I remove the magazine, lock the slider, put that in position, check whether the chamber is clear of ammunition or ammunition parts. Then I move the slide forward again, release the safety catch, squeeze the trigger. The first step is to remove the two retaining pins from the receiver with the barrel. I've removed the buttstock complete with recoil spring, charging handle and bolt carrier. I could now remove the upper receiver as well. But this is only taken off for technical inspections or cleaning, so the weapon is now field stripped. The MP7 is small and easy to handle, but still has a high penetrative power at short range. The 4.6 mm by 30 caliber cartridges can also penetrate military body armor. A 
a magazine can hold up to 40 rounds. The center of mass of the bullets is toward the rear. This causes the projectile to tumble following impact, leaving a larger wound channel. In this way, the man-stopping effect is increased. I normally have a magazine in the weapon and generally carry an additional six magazines. In addition to an iron sight, the MP7 is fitted with a reflex sight with illuminated dot. An additionally mounted NSV-80 night sight attachment makes the submachine gun night combat capable. The weapon has an extendable stock and a folding foregrip. For covert operations, a silencer can also be fitted. The majority of the global population today lives in urban environments, so you have to be prepared to prevail in an urban battlefield. This is an extremely challenging environment, because you aren't just moving in one dimension, that is, on the ground, but on different levels of buildings. So you have to pay attention that there aren't drones flying around that could give away your position. You're moving from brightness into darkness. You have to work in the sewers, so you need night vision equipment. You'll need laser light devices there, you need handguns that you can use from cover. And you need to be aware that the enemy, a booby trap or worse, could be lurking behind every wall and around every corner. So urban warfare involves one of the most challenging infantry combat techniques you can think of. The weapons used by the Bundeswehr today have little in common with the weaponry available at the time of its formation in 1955. West Germany was initially rearmed with inventory from the US Army. But the new NATO member quickly switched to domestically manufactured handheld weapons. In 1959, the German-designed G3 assault rifle was introduced as the standard-issued rifle. The G3 remained in service until 1997, when it was superseded by the G36. Small numbers are still used by the Bundeswehr to this day as a platoon sniper rifle. The G3 can be switched between semi-automatic and automatic fire modes. A magazine holds 20 7.62 mm by 51 NATO rounds. In 1969, the Bundeswehr soldiers are issued the MG3 machine gun. The MG3 was derived from the infamous World War II era MG42. The machine gun, which had already seen service in the German Wehrmacht, has an incredible rate of fire of up to 1,200 rounds per minute. Another weapon that was used by the Bundeswehr for over half a century is the legendary Uzi. The Israeli submachine gun is robust, accurate, and simple to operate. It served in the Bundeswehr as the standard issue weapon for squad leaders, tank crews, and dispatch riders. Since 1974, the Bundeswehr soldiers have been using the TOW guided missile system for anti-tank defense. Developing a strong anti-tank defense was the Bundeswehr's response to the threat from the Warsaw Pact countries during the Cold War era. NATO feared the invasion of West German territory by huge formations of enemy tanks in the event of war. The TOW system fires wire-guided missiles with a hollow-charge warhead that can pierce 800-millimeter tank steel at a distance of up to 3,750 meters. The TOW anti-tank defense system was also mounted on the so-called Kraka, a quad vehicle used by the paratroopers. This weapon carrier featured a 24-horsepower engine and all-wheel drive and was used exclusively by the Bundeswehr airborne troops before being retired from service in 1991. The majority of the handheld weapons used by the Bundeswehr are supplied by Heckler & Koch, from Oberndorf in the Black Forest. The town has a long tradition of weapons manufacture. Heckler & Koch was founded in 1949 by former employees of the Mauser factory that was also based here. The defense manufacturing company has been supplying the Bundeswehr with high quality weapons since the late 1950s. In the company's own weapons laboratory, developers are testing the G95K 
a new assault rifle for the Kampfschwimmer and Special Forces Command. In the so-called over-the-beach test, the weapon is submerged in a water tank until it fills up completely. It will be subjected to this kind of stress on a routine basis when in use by the combat swimmers and special forces. In order to get close to their target undetected, the special forces also operate underwater. Their weapons must remain fully operational at all times. The developer removes the rifle from the tank and fires it. Three single shots and two automatic bursts. The weapon should perform flawlessly. The Bundeswehr G95K assault rifle weighs nearly 3.7 kilograms. It shoots 5.56 millimeter by 51 NATO rounds and has a theoretical rate of fire of 850 rounds a minute. It has a maximum effective range of up to 300 meters. The G95K consists of 250 individual parts. Its manufacturing begins by hardening the special steel. The components are heated to 900 degrees Celsius for several hours and then cool down rapidly. This increases the mechanical strength. The receiver sections are made from a high strength forged aluminum alloy. The parts are machined in several steps using modern CNC milling machines. The machining work is performed to tolerances of just a few hundredths of a millimeter. Work continues around the clock in three shifts. All function and safety relevant parts of the G95K are made by Heckler & Koch on location. The central element of every weapon is its barrel. Here, the steel tubes are heat treated so that they can withstand the extreme temperatures and pressures they will be subjected to later when in use. The barrels of the G95K are cold forged. Here, the barrel of the G95K is forged around the mandrel. The so-called lands and grooves are created in the process. And these lands and grooves are forged into the barrel and are responsible for the precision of the barrel and spin of the bullets. The spin, the precisely adjusted barrel, and the ammunition, together with the sight, are the parameters required to hit the target with pinpoint accuracy. Besides all the state-of-the-art machinery, there's one other very special expert required to manufacture the barrel, the human being. The barrel of the assault rifle must be absolutely straight, a job for the barrel straightener. This trade has been around for as long as there have been guns. The barrel straightener's job is to straighten the barrel, and he uses a technique that's been around for well over a century to do so. The specialist is able to detect the smallest distortion in the barrel and straightens it with the help of a special straightening jig. His eyes can detect inaccuracies much faster and more reliably than a machine. Every single barrel is checked and straightened by hand. Besides a good eye, the work requires enormous concentration and years of experience. Manual straightening is a prerequisite for producing a high-precision weapon. Meanwhile, in the ballistics lab, the next stress test is being performed. The standard issue pistol of the German armed forces, the P8, is undergoing the icing test. Every weapon of the Bundeswehr, whether assault rifle or pistol, must remain fully functional even under extreme negative temperatures. The weapon is stored for 24 hours at minus 30 degrees Celsius in the climate chamber, then sprayed several times with a mist of water. This simulates freezing fog conditions. The deep frozen weapon must fire accurately and reliably even in this state. Only then will it pass the stress test. Over 80 people work in the Heckler & Koch development department. It takes several years to develop a new rifle like the G95K. The weapons begin their lives as 3D models on a computer. This is then used as the basis for constructing and testing the prototypes. The development goes through several stages, at the end of which the weapon is ready for series production. Heckler and Koch spent a total of three years working on the G95K before it was ready to be issued to the special forces of the Bundeswehr.
In the assembly department, the 250 individual parts of the assault rifle are put together to make the finished functional weapon. And it's done by hand. Great care is taken when assembling every weapon. Each G95K is individually marked and labeled along the way. Serial number, proof marks, manufacturer symbol, caliber, model designation, production date, and owner ID are laser engraved onto the weapon. Now, the weapon is completely assembled and ready to be fired for the first time. The test firing is done in the company's own shooting range. This is where the G95K is fired to check its accuracy. Every newly manufactured G95K is fired with live ammunition a total of three times, with the legally required overpressure shot, functional shot, and precision shot. The Special Forces rifle is subject to the most stringent requirements. The Bundeswehr demands 100% accuracy. Around 45,000 rounds will be expended over the course of testing the roughly 1,600 special assault rifles ordered by the Bundeswehr. After passing the firing test, which is monitored by a proof house, each weapon is issued an individual proof certificate. If the weapon doesn't meet the criteria, it has to be readjusted. The G95K is ready for use and can now be delivered to the special forces of the Bundeswehr. The location of this site and most of the details about the training methods are top secret. This is where the Bundeswehr snipers are trained. Their task? Reconnaissance and engagement of hostile forces at large distances with aimed single shots. We're now at our final position. My partner is preparing his weapon and also partially camouflaging it. He's finished preparing the ammunition. We'll be ready for action soon. Then we'll take up position, set the weapon up for the target. I set up right next to my shooter with my scope I align myself with the target so I can observe the shot directly. If the first shot doesn't hit the target, I can correct the second one so we can neutralize the adversary with the second shot. But the first shot will hit the mark, of course. The G22 sniper rifle being used here is manufactured by the British company Accuracy International. With the G22, the Bundeswehr now has a dedicated sniper rifle in its armory for the first time. The snipers use the current combat-enhanced version, the G22A2. The over 1.2-meter-long G22 weighs 9 kilograms. It fires 7.62 millimeter by 67 caliber ammunition and can take out targets at distances of up to 1,100 meters. A NATO standard Picatinny rail is fitted to the top of the weapon. This can be used to mount a night sight in addition to the telescopic sight. The telescopic sight of the combat-enhanced version has a variable magnification of between 5 and 25 times. The high-performance scope has an illuminated graticule plate and allows shot corrections for elevation and windage. Should the telescopic sight fail, the sniper can still engage targets up to a distance of 600 meters using a backup sight. In combination with the NSV-80 night sight, the G22A sniper rifle is night combat capable. The G22 can additionally be fitted with a silencer, a so-called flash suppressor. This reduces the muzzle blast thus making it more difficult for the enemy to spot the sniper. The G-22 can fire either full metal jacket or armor-piercing ammunition. It's a bolt-action rifle, so each round in the five-round magazine has to be fed manually. 
This has the advantage that when a shot is taken, no other parts of the weapon that could affect accuracy move. Manual reloading takes time, but results in far greater shot accuracy than is possible with semi or fully automatic weapons. To work the bolt, I move the bolt lever upwards, pull the bolt back, this ejects the cartridge, then I have to slide the bolt forward again. The bolt strips off the new cartridge. Feeding it into the chamber, lock the bolt again. The cartridge is chambered and the weapon cocked. The G22 precision rifle is stored in a special rifle case together with a comprehensive range of accessories. The snipers transport the equipment needed for their mission to the deployment location in backpack carrying systems, often weighing 30, 40 or 50 kilograms. The required equipment includes a muzzle cap, honeycomb filter, extra magazine, weapon cleaning kit, silencer, tools, and laser range finder. The snipers use a weather meter with integrated ballistics program to determine all the relevant data for the perfect projectile trajectory. A sniper team always consists of two soldiers usually with longer service ranks. They're commanded by their sniper team commander. He is generally the one to give permission for the shot. Fire when ready, delay enemy. Should the snipers become cut off from their unit, they fulfill their mission on their own initiative. Target at 750 meters. Set elevation five and seven. Five and seven. And set windage. Four left. Four left. I'm on it. Okay, ready. Ready. Nowadays, it isn't just the regular armed forces that employ modern reconnaissance equipment but irregular combatants as well. Because of this, a sniper team must remain as invisible as possible and not generate any signals that could reveal their presence. This includes visual or acoustic cues, for instance. But heat and electronic signals could be picked up by an enemy and thus also betray the team. The snipers make themselves practically invisible with specially made camouflage suits, so-called ghillie suits. The soldiers weave twigs, earth, and grass into their suits so that they blend in with the natural surroundings in an emergency. Snipers have to meet high character, physical, and technical skills requirements. Only a fraction of the candidates pass the selection process. The first few weeks are a test of fitness and condition. 7,000 meters speed march with 20 kilos of equipment. And you have to finish in under 52 minutes and then 5,000. That's 5,000 meters on the tartan track in under 22 minutes. Those are just the physical challenges you have to meet to begin with, to prove you have a basic level of fitness, because you're always carrying a lot of gear with you. And then you have to show you can work effectively under stress and without making mistakes. Mistakes happen, but they have to be prevented. And then it continues with shooting training, observation training, range determination, basically everything you need as a sniper so that if the technology stops working, you can use your head and still get the job done with the equipment you have, like calculate ranges without a laser range finder. Determine the lead for a moving target. How fast is the target moving? How much do I need to lead by? With my sight, with my scope? Approach, camouflage? How do I camouflage myself in the field? How do I move in the field? How do I move quietly? How do I communicate in the field without radio, just using hand signals? You need to learn all of this, and then you return to Hamelburg for a four-week training course, and then you're tested again. If you pass, you then get to call yourself a sniper. Extensive training and the character, mental and physical aptitude of a sniper are indispensable. Something even the best rifle cannot replace. Ready. Ready. Besides making a deadly shot, 
snipers have a demoralizing effect on the opponent. Hits intimidate and frighten the enemy. As well-camouflaged scouts, snipers also provide valuable intelligence. While snipers engage high-value targets, other infantrymen fight the enemy directly in the Lüneburger Heide. The paratroopers from Seedorf are engaging fictitious snipers. Their weapon of choice for combat at short and medium ranges is the G28 semi-automatic designated marksman rifle. The G28 marksman engages targets that either couldn't be tackled with other handheld weapons or only by expending large amounts of ammunition. It has an effective range of up to 800 meters. The weapons are only used when explicitly ordered. Charlie 1, this is Spotter 1, over. Enemy contact, two shooters about 500 meters in front of ours, in the open, over. The over one meter long G28 weighs 7.7 .7 kilograms. It fires 7.62 millimeter by 51 caliber ammunition as aimed single shots and has a maximum effective range of 800 meters. The optics include the telescopic sight we have attached at the moment. Then there's a patrol version of the G28, which has a shorter one fitted. And for close combat, the aim point we can see on top here. The receiver is made of steel and is milled from a solid block. The handguard is made from lightweight aluminum. Only the pistol grip is composed of robust plastic. Another special feature is the color of the rifle. Green-brown coloration of the weapon has proven to be a universally applicable camouflage color. The G28 is used to put aimed single shots on identified targets. The Bundeswehr does not envisage the weapon being used to fire bursts. The illuminated dot sight mounted on the three to 20 times magnification telescopic sight is used to engage targets at close ranges of up to 100 meters. The first thing we need to field strip the G28 is the tool from the pistol grip. The tool is used to release this pin here from this side. You then press it through. You can't pull it out completely. Tilt the weapon and remove the bolt carrier and charging handle. Then you remove the retaining pin. You can't pull this out completely either, only partially. The pistol grip now comes away. The only thing left to remove in the field is the bipod. The G28 is now stripped. The NATO 7.62 mm by 51 caliber used by the G28 has a much higher target effectiveness than the smaller caliber of the standard issue G36. The G28 marksman has discovered an enemy squad and takes aim. A team member assists him in communicating with his superior. Sit rep, enemy squad up ahead. The G-28 marksman engages especially dangerous targets, including technical targets, like the optics of weapons mounted on enemy vehicles. Destroyed. The Bundeswehr in joint forces combat. Here, attack helicopters, modern tanks, reconnaissance drones, and infantry are fighting together on the battlefield. The Panzerfaust III RPG is used when engaging enemy tanks. The Bundeswehr soldiers also use it to attack combat vehicles with the latest armor protection technology because it can pierce up to 900 millimeter thick tank steel. 
Do you have punch faust? The punch faust three is deployed as a squad weapon. So there are two RPG gunners, close protection soldiers, and a squad leader. The punch faust three can only be used once. This means that after firing, the grip is folded away. We take up alternate positions, and the second RPG gunner immediately steps up and fires another round as required. The ready-to-use, roughly 1.2-meter-long Panzerfaust III is relatively light at 13 kilograms. Its maximum effective range is around 400 meters. It fires mono or tandem-shaped charge warheads as single shots. The Panzerfaust III consists of two parts, the trigger assembly and the grenade. To fire it, the gunner slides the trigger assembly with telescopic sight onto the launch tube with warhead and presses until it audibly engages. The sight has a 2.5 times magnification. The penetrative performance depends on the material and armor protection of the target. Depending on the target, the gunner can pull out the spike on the warhead. The warhead of the Panzerfaust III has a spike. If this spike is extended, the weapon works like a shaped charge warhead and is thus suitable for anti-tank defense. If the spike is not extended, the Panzerfaust III works like a high-explosive squash head charge. So it explodes close to the impact site. The most modern variant is currently the Panzerfaust IT, which features a dual-shaped charge warhead. This allows it to go up against most of the main battle tanks that are protected by ERA tiles. The trigger assembly with telescopic sight can fire up to 1,500 grenades before having to be replaced. To field strip, operate the lever, remove the trigger assembly, and the Panzerfaust III is stripped. In combination with the NSV-80 night vision attachment, the Panzerfaust III is night combat capable. The NSV-80 is basically an add-on adapter. So I still use the normal sight and can therefore engage targets at 400 meters. This means that a quickly deployable and effective weapon is available for night combat as well. Then there's the adapter plate on the side in front of the sight. It's very simple to install. Slide it on. Screw it tight. Done. The Panzerfaust III can also be used to engage bunkers and targets behind cover. The Bundeswehr soldiers engage targets that can't be destroyed using the Panzerfaust with the recently purchased MELS anti-tank system. MELS is intended as a replacement for the Milan guided missile system. The heavy airborne infantry platoon is 31 soldiers strong. It consists of the platoon leader, a sniper squad, a GMG squad, and an anti-tank squad with three MELS crews. You could say we come into play where the Panzerfaust is no longer effective. The MELS team never works alone. We always have other soldiers, fire teams, squads and platoons on the flanks to support us with reconnaissance beforehand. And as mentioned, our weapon comes into play where others reach their limits, because we have an engagement distance of 300 to 4,000 meters. It takes several months of special training to operate MELS. It also requires a high degree of physical fitness, as the heavy weapon is carried to the deployment site by the MELS squad. MELS consists of a 14 kilo guided missile, 10.1 kilo ICU, and 1.1 kilo battery pack, and a tripod weighing 3 kilos. The advantage of MELS, rapid deployment ready to fire in one minute. The 1.2 meter long weapon weighs a total of 26 kilograms. The MEL squad can engage armored targets at ranges of up to 4,000 meters. It uses tandem-shaped charge and fragmentation warheads against vehicles or troops. The MEL's anti-tank weapon consists of a launch tube containing the guided missile and is mounted on a tripod for infantry use. A battery pack and launch controller complete the system. 
a highly sensitive infrared sensor built into the seeker head of the rocket allows the gunner to track the missile's flight on a control monitor. The paratroopers are using MELs to attack an enemy tank. The target is approximately 3.5 kilometers away. The three-man MEL squad takes up position and prepares the weapon system. It takes the soldiers about a minute to set up. They take aim at the sighted tank. The gunner can acquire targets that are not visible after launch using the missile's infrared camera and adjust the trajectory to target accordingly. The Infantryman of the Future project is part of the Bundeswehr's drive to modernize the infantry. The program is designed to improve the combat equipment and communication between the soldiers. The program consists of three interconnected core elements, clothing and protective equipment for worldwide deployment in all climate zones, weapon systems, and optronics, including command and control systems. Here, the soldier's mission is to gather intelligence on enemy forces. The infantrymen have adapted their modular clothing for the mission profile, reconnaissance in urban terrain. On the back of their body armor, the soldiers wear computers that operate reliably even under extreme conditions. All of the system components, like weapons, display and control devices, are connected with the core computer. In this way, the soldiers exchange information about their position and the situation via the command and control information system. Soldier systems originated in the soldier modernization projects of the NATO forces in the 1980s. They've been developed significantly since then and are all designed along similar lines. They're divided into clothing, protection and carrying systems, weapons, optics and optronics and all the command and control systems, like radios, link-ups, tablets, and so on. Around 50 countries are currently working on soldier systems. The Bundeswehr first introduced the Enhanced Infantryman of the Future system in 2012, and in 2017 placed a follow-up order for equipping additional infantry soldiers with the modular system. Using a monocular, the soldier can determine the range to object by laser and transmit the data to the command post. The soldier also has a helmet system with display. It provides him with information such as the target and line of approach. He can even identify friendlies by means of superimposed symbols. This enables him to distinguish between enemy and friendly forces even in chaotic situations. The weapons of the Infantryman of the Future system can be individually configured for each mission. The soldier has a choice between different optics, such as a high-performance night vision device. A daytime-capable thermal imaging add-on can also be mounted. The squad leader has access to portable CNC computers. They offer additional functionality. The squad leader quickly transmits the sketches with the directions to his comrades in the boxer. The operation is over. The soldiers have completed their reconnaissance mission. With the infantryman of the future system, the Bundeswehr has a state-of-the-art combat system for dismounted combat forces in the Army, Air Force, and Navy. What's more, the system is being continually updated. A command, optics, and weapons concept that offers the Bundeswehr soldier greater firepower and accuracy. The combat infantry, the ground soldiers, will also continue to play a key role in possible future conflicts. The Bundeswehr is constantly adapting its weaponry and training concepts for international missions in particular. In addition, 
The Bundeswehr must continually reassess its capabilities with regard to state and national defense in order to maintain and enhance them. And being equipped with the latest weapons systems and command and control technology is crucial.